Now, I want to talk about health care because as early as Thursday, every one of our cities is about to go through an immense change. As early as Thursday, the lives of our people are going to be altered. And, and I want to say at the outset something I heard in one of our committee meetings yesterday that really struck me. A couple of my Republican colleagues talking about the health care debate in Washington took pains to make clear that they were not satisfied with the approach to health care that was put together under President Obama. But then they said something very fundamental and something that should unite us all. They said, that being said, what we're watching in Washington is not a solution either. They said that the fact that there's not actually an effort to see how we all could contribute to a solution, how we could do something that rises above partisanship on the topic of health care, we could actually try and figure out what is the long-term fix for our national health care system, there is an opportunity being lost in these days to try and do it right. And I'm saying this to you with urgency. Let me describe the urgency that I feel because of the size of my city. Fully 1.6 million New Yorkers could lose their health insurance if the proposal before the New York Senate, excuse me, the, the U.S. Senate uh, were passed. 1.6 million New Yorkers could lose their health insurance. We've all heard the numbers nationally, 23, 24 million could lose their health insurance. Again, in a spirit of bipartisanship, every mayor in this room, regardless of where you are from, the size of your city or your party affiliation, some of those people are going to be in your city. In many cases, a lot of those people are going to be in your city. Many cities can count those people in the thousands, the tens of thousands. Some can count them in the hundreds of thousands. And when people lose their insurance, families start to suffer. Things start to fall apart in their lives. Their household economy crumbles. It's not just a health care and humanitarian crisis. It's an economic crisis. And when people fall apart, when families fall apart, who catches them when they fall? We do. Every single one of us, that's what we do. And we have great partners in charitable organizations, nonprofit organizations, and faith organizations, but they all look to us to be the core of solving these challenges. And so we are staring right now at the possibility that on Thursday we're going to see the wheel turn and this begin to happen to our cities. We're going to see our hospitals stressed in a way they've never seen before. We will see hospitals unable to provide the services they have in the past. We're going to see hospitals close. And sadly, they're going to close in the places where they're needed the most, in some of the regions of the country and some of the cities that have had some of the toughest times. This is what we're watching before our very eyes, but it's not a foregone conclusion. And, and this is my call to arms, and it's, it's bipartisan because it affects all of us. And because some of the most powerful testimony I've heard about what will happen comes from my Republican colleagues who've talked about their cities, who've talked about what their business communities fear in this legislation, what their hospital leadership fears in this legislation, and that there's got to be a better way.